Yo, what is poppin' my guys? It is your boy Ashley, and today I am bringing you my HBL replays. So, I ended up playing four games in HBL, which if you don't know, is Aaron 2420's league, with the Heater he Bros league, and I'm just gonna quickly read off my team before my phone crashes again. I had Tepu Coco, Skarmory, Salamence, Milotic, Decidueye, Mega Agron, Incineroar, and it just quit out on me again, so... Uh, my phone sucks. I really don't know if I'm going to be able to, to look up the whole team. Basically, what you need to know is I drafted a very bulky team with wands like Portagon 2 and picked up Alolan Ninetales in the last round to give me that a uh, Aurora Veil vale edge that's going to be super nice throughout the season. Now, I'm not going to go down into the individual prep that went down between these games because there are three of them to watch. Unfortunately, I know you're probably thinking, hey, you said you played four games. Why are there only three replays? Well, uh, my game with Aaron, week two, actually, I could not find a replay for. I looked through the, the whole server, and I guess neither of us posted it after it was gone, or after it was done. But I'll talk about that game after we watch our first game. First game, we go up against Quinn, uh, that boy in the six. So, we were just going to go ahead and lead off with our Mega Aggron. So, he's going to taunt. Good play, obviously. And we cannot use our stealth rock. So now he's going to bounce right into Rotom as I iron head. Really had no reason to iron head there. Um, I didn't think he would be hard switching into Kirim. But oh well, whatever. So I am going to go ahead and go into my Lotic. And he is calling all of these shots, by the way, in the chat. He he called every, every move that I was going for. So <laughs> that's pretty funny. I get my flame warp here off as he's going to get in his Kirim. Now I don't want to do, don't, I don't want to take a fusion bolt, so I'm just going to go right out into Agron because it eats that really, really well. And uh, he is going to go right back into Rotom Wash. So I get all my rocks here, which is nice. But as you guys probably already know, Rotom does get defogged. So after I bounce out into my Nine Tails, he is just going to fire that off scot free. So I could hit the Aura Veil right here or I could hit freeze dry but I think that Quinn is a smart enough player and he seems to be calling my shots uh oh, I'm sorry no hold on pause 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 okay uh, it seemed like he was calling my shots in the chat but I just remember we actually had to recreate that game so he was actually just like letting me know what we had what we had done so never <laughs> never mind on that uh this is this is the point where we are back up to even I can't remember why, even why we had to restart the game I think it's because my nine tails didn't have snow warning possibly something like that anyway i am going to fire off the aura veil as he switches into snorlax so i'm going to bounce right here into my salamence uh, as he throws off the toxic and misses and uh, i'm just going to go ahead and fire off the dragon dance right here i know that there's a possibility that he ice punches but i went for the dragon dance anyway which really sucks because uh I probably shouldn't have done that. He does still have the Mimikyu with Disguise intact, so there's not a whole lot that Salamence could have done right here. But I didn't really have a whole lot of other things to take on this Snorlax, so I just wanted it out of the way. I hit it with the plus one Devastating Drake, and I am going to get my Moxie boost. So he is going to go right here into the Mimikyu. I probably could have just attacked, expecting a Sword Stance or something, but I didn't want to lose Mints. I could have, I felt like I could have. Oh, sorry. I feel like I could have brought it back after that, but he is going to go ahead and fire off a Will-O-Wisp onto my Aggron, which is not too bad. I'm not, this isn't really like a heavy attack set. Uh, this is more of just a get rocks up and wall the Kyurem set, so I don't mind getting burned on it. I'm going to bounce right out into my Milotic because he makes the nice double into Rotom, which is definitely a little bit of a problem because I really don't have anything for Rotom on my team either. Uh, the, the, the reason I'm not big on my prep this week in particular is that it really, really, really depended on Salamence sweeping. Uh, everything on this team is designed to get chip damage on his team in order to let Salamence sweep. And I just brought in Salamence way, way, way too early. So it's just getting a lot of unnecessary chip on a lot of my mods that I didn't really need to let happen. So I am just going to recover right here because I know I love a Volt Switch, but I don't end up really recovering that much health and I still am going to die to a Fusion Bolt from the Kyurem. So I'm just going to bounce right back out into my Aggron and uh, not really worry about it so even though i am burned he really does not want to stay in and take an iron head from an aggron i mean i guess he does he just stays in at his ice beam as i am just going to get up my stealth rocks that's probably just a good uh that's probably just a good ugh. god i can't talk today that's just a good smart decision on his part just to stay in he, i mean rocks are pretty important for my team because i do need salamence to sweep 
Uh, Tepu Koko can do a good job once everything is low enough, but you know, whatever. Uh, I'm going to bounce back into Alolan Ninetales here on the Defog, which is whatever. I mean, at least I get the opportunity to set up the Veil again or go for a freeze dry on this Rotom as I just opt to set up the Veil. He goes for the Volt Switch, safe, no drawback play, and he is going to go right into the camera up. So I obviously don't want to stay in here because this thing can easily bomb through this all the nine tails even through the veil and i'm going to switch out into the de designated check which is my mylotic as he just throws up the stuff the rocks probably could have stayed in there and gotten some chip damage because uh the rocks are kind of important for his team even though i do have squarmory to defog a lot of the things on his team uh can just easily set up on squarmory so and plus i have the veil so it's kind of advantageous to me to not defog if i want to try and produce some longevity so the rocks there were kind of obvious and I really should have probably tried to predict, but I'm going to go ahead and just sack off the Eggron right now as he actually hits Taunt, meaning that I can't get out my Stealth Rocks, which sucks. Um, he knows I'm going to die to burn this turn anyway, um, so I think he switches, but I'm just going to hard switch out. Don't really know why I was preserving the Eggron. Uh, I guess I just knew that going Celesteela here was a really safe play. Uh, sorry, Celesteela. <laughs> going Skarmory here was a really safe play. Uh, unfortunately, it seems I'm not packing any attacking move other than the Drill Pack, so... I really, really don't know why I made this series of plays because it's really just kind of uh, this back and forth of drill pecking and him having taunt. And there's really no way I can win this 1v1. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch out right here into Tepu Koko. I probably should have waited till there was a turn where he wanted to taunt. But I didn't. Um, even though I only take 20 through the veil, the veil does wear off this turn. So I'm just going to fire off the Nature's Madness right here as he's going to soft boil. Um, after this turn, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Thunderbolt, and I do get a critical hit and knock it down to 84 and paralyze the Mew, so that is actually really, really nice for me, especially because he does get fully paralyzed on this turn, so that basically just allows me to fire off any kind of move I want to go for. He decides to sack off the Mew, so Dazzling Gleam. It really wouldn't have done that much more if it went into the camera up, but it still would have been some sort of chip damage. And I can just easily switch right out into my Milotic here, so he is going to Earth Power. That is going to do a lot, but I can just recover safely here because I do have speeding. I can go for the Scald, and I know that he doesn't want to lose this Mega Camera up when I still have all of my Pokemon intact. So I do get the Recover off here, which is really nice, but again, he goes right into the Cure Room, and I am unable to live a Fusion Pull. If I had Scalded there and possibly gotten the Scald Burn on any of the turns where Cure Room switched in on the Milotic, Instead of recovering, I could have gotten the burn off and maybe lived some fusion bolts, but with again, I wouldn't have been at such high health, so I'm not exactly sure how that would have played out. Uh, he's going to go for the Ice Beam there and absolutely obliterate this Skarmory, which, uh, you know, is neither here nor there. I kind of just needed to sack it anyway. I'm going to go right here for an Aura Veil as he goes into the fusion bolt, and that doesn't really do anything at all. And... Here, I think I just fired off a Moonblast as he switches into the camera up. Uh, getting chip damage on this thing is going to be important, and unfortunately, I don't have anything that's going to be able to deal any serious damage to this camera up, and I definitely can't live. I know I can at least get a Veil off again at some point in the future against the Kyurem, so I decide to save it, and unfortunately decide to sack off the Salamence here. I wish I could have brought it in at a different time. I should have brought it in at a different time. I probably should have gone Milotic there instead of going into it right here, but... Unfortunately, I didn't do that. Um, I was hoping it was I was hoping it would Earth Power again, which is why I went Salamence. But that was a very risky play that I had no need, no, no really no need to make. So he is just going to go right here into Kyurem on my recover and double right back out into Rotom Wash because I really can't do anything to this Rotom. I tried a Toxic and I miss, but that doesn't really matter uh, too much because there's not anything I can do to damage this Rotom anyway. I'm going to switch right out into my Tepu Koko, just planning on taking anything he wants to go for, as he is going to fire off the Volt Switch, and I believe go right back into Mega Camera Up. Yeah, exactly, uh, because why not? Eventually, he is going to work down this Milotic. Now, here, I Dazzling Gleam, expecting him to try and predict my double into Milotic, because if he could get Cure on Black End to lay down a little bit more damage, that would have been really, really good for him, but he obviously didn't need it as uh, he is just going to knock me out and I do get the revenge kill with Scald on my Milotic but Milotic and Ninetales cannot be Mimikyu by themselves so 
Unfortunately, he is just going to Fusion Bolt here, knock out my Melodic, and I'm just going to have to go into Ninetales and die pretty much. There's nothing I can do at this point. I am in a Moonblast attempting to take it out, but since I didn't get any chip damage off on this, uh, sorry, since I didn't get any chip damage off on the Kyurem, it's not really going to do much. He never really had to bring out Mimikyu, except for in the beginning. But yeah, very well played. Very well played game by Quinn. I definitely could have played better and maybe taken the W in that game if I'd have played my Aura Veil smarter and everything like that. But again, my prep didn't really allow me to handle things such as the Snorlax without Salamence. So it was really a play I had to make, unfortunately. But again, good game with Quinn. And I guess now is the time to talk about my game with Aaron. Aaron absolutely smacked me. I think he beat me four or five zero. I didn't really. I prepped all by myself for that game, and that's that's another thing I want to mention. I prepped for all of these HBL games without any help whatsoever. So. This was a league I was really trying to come into my own as a prepper. There, I learned a lot from this game in particular about prep is that like you cannot risk your win con if it is your literally only win con. None of those other Pokemon, uh, Tapu Koko even, was there just to get chip damage and everything off. As you can tell by the Nature's Madness set and everything. So uh, really just don't, don't risk your only win con very, very early in the game. Or at least bring more than one win con because putting all your eggs in one basket is prone to them bringing multiple things that you need your win con to take down I guess so very well played game by Quinn uh, very well played game by Aaron unfortunately I really don't have that replay I wish I did because I do like to talk about games that I play with Aaron they're usually pretty fun for me but yeah we're just gonna move right into our week three game against Flame Horizon so I'm just gonna real quick switch sides on this so his team is really scary uh, to me I think that Salamence has a really good matchup in this game, as well as, uh, sorry, Aggron actually has a really good matchup in this game as well, because things like Rotom cannot obviously take on my Aggron, but pretty much every, and also um, Zygarde, but a lot of the other things on his team cannot really handle Aggron, Aggron on their own, so... Not a bad matchup in my opinion, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, obviously relying very heavily on Veil as the team is more used to, as he is going to lead Rotom and I lead Tapu Koko. So here, I just decided to fire off a U-turn. He had lots of different ways to stop my Volt Switch, so I opted to, to bring U-turn this week instead of Volt Switch. And he is going to go right into Zygarde, which is perfect for me because it allows me to U-turn and go right into my Ninetales. So he obviously cannot stay in on my Ninetales. Even if he predicts me to set up the Aura Veil, I can very easily knock him out the turn after that, even if he does get damage off on me, and I will outspeed. So, he is pretty much forced to go into Mega Metagross here as I fire off an Aura Veil and get that nice boost to my special defense and defense on any mon from my team for 8 turns. So, I'm going to bounce right out here to my Porygon as he goes for the Meteor Mesh and does 18%, which is really, really good. Obviously, Porygon putting its weight in here. He is going to switch hard out into his Absol as I go for the foul play. Really good, really good on his part because foul play does do a lot to his team. He has a lot of things that can set up offensively, and he is going to go ahead and grab that justified boost for the Absol. So, fearing the superpower, I'm just going to switch hard out into Tepu Koko as he is going to Mega and fire off a knockoff. So that does get rid of my Expert Belt, but I do also outspeed this Mega Absol and. With the aura veil up, he cannot knock me out with Sucker Punch. I'm just going to go for the U-turn because it will knock out the Absol, I think, from the range it was at. As he switches hard into Tangrowth, letting me get a very free switch in to my Salamence. So, he might have HP Ice here, but I decided to set up in Dragon Dance anyway because the aura veil is going to help a lot. As you can see, he actually crits on the knockoff. So, luckily, we are Z-Move and we didn't really need... Uh, sorry. Luckily, we're Z-Move, and I'm just going to fire off a Z-Fly here, because if he chooses to stay with Tangrowth, it's easily going to take it out. And as you can see, that absolutely obliterates the Primarina, giving us a plus one in attack. So, that is really, really nice as he goes right out into Rotom. He reveals to be Choice Scarf Rotom, but that Thunderbolt is not going to get the Paralysis, and we are going to knock this thing out with the Dragon Claw, putting us at plus three. So, that is really, really nice. We are now at plus three Salamence at 1.5 speed, but our Aura Veil wears off, so... He goes right here into Absol and goes for the Sucker Punch and knocks us down to 12. But thankfully we live and we can fire off an Earthquake and knock this thing out. So now we are sitting at plus 3, feeling very, very nice as he goes right into Tangrowth. So I'm actually going to hit Fly here because both of the other Pokemon he has I can knock out if he decides to switch. 
And if he decides to knock off the Tang Earth, I pretty much win anyway. So I'm going to knock out this Tang Earth. I'm going to hit the Fly, which is nice because that move can miss. Get up to plus three as he is going to send in his Metagross. So here I am going to hit Earthquake, knock this thing out. He's obviously not packing Bullet Punch, so he couldn't knock me out. And uh, as long as he's not packing E-Speed on Zygarde, this is going to be our first 6-0 in the Draft League format. As you can see, he is not. We're going to hit the Dragon Claw and knock out the Zygarde, bringing our overall record to 1-2. And... Two, and getting a nice juicy 6-0 sweep for my main man Salamence so not bad at all really really liking the Veil so far this is kind of where it clicked to me of how to play Veil and preserving my offensive win con until later as well as having Coco is an offensive win con as well it was not really as much of a chip set as it was a very very offensive set and yeah, really, really nice to grab a win. So now we are 1-2, and two, heading into week 4 versus Merciful Shadow. So I'm going to play, switch sides. Probably could have done this before. Oof. Oof. Sorry, I know y'all don't have, uh, what's it called, on right now. Y'all don't have sounds on, but that sound was really loud. Hoopa has such a loud laugh. Anyway, this man's team is really scary because he has mons like Stack Attack and Hoopa, which are so, so, so strong. And if he can live a hit from a Dragon Dance Salamence and get the Trick Room off of Stack Attack, that thing can easily, easily whop through a good portion of my team with its moveset, especially if he starts racking up those Beast Boosts. So, definitely scared of that Pokemon, as well as Clefable, because Clefable is... Uh, not really, I mean, if he brings unaware, then my Salamence's boost do not matter, and I do not think I'm packing a steel move, so this, this matchup in particular is one that really, really scared me, but basically the same plan as last time, guys, uh, wall things out with the last three mons, set up Veil with the first, and try and sweep with the middle two, let's get it, he is going to start out with his Hoopa, and I am going to go right here into my Mega Aggron, so I know that he might be able to handle me if he's special, but... Sorry, I know he might be able to handle me if he's special, but if he's physical, I'm going to be able to eat hits for days. So I'm just going to set up my Stealth Rocks as he reveals the Brick Break. I don't I don't know if he should have revealed that so early because that, that would have been a great tech for the Alolan Ninetales later on in the game. Because I would always expect a Hoopa to switch out on a Ninetales, but if he could use the Brick Break and knock out and knock that Aura Veil out and then get himself a free switch into something that can outspeed me like a Manetric and fire off an Overheat, that could be really good for him. But he chooses to go for it turn one and it pretty much just allows me to get free rocks. So I decide that if that's his best thing to hit me with fighting wise, I am just going to stay in and fire off an Earthquake. Hoopa does not have great defense. And that is going to do a very hefty chunk. He's going to go for the Brick Break again. He does get a crit that time, but I am going to Earthquake and knock him down to about 8%. So here I'm going to Earthquake and actually win a Speed Tie. I think he might have been going for Trick Room there, uh, expecting me maybe to switch and preserve. But I am actually going to be able to Earthquake and knock out the Hoopa. So here I don't really mind losing my aggro on, so I'm just going to hit Toxic. Because he reveals Brick Break on this Mon as well. So... Just really giving me all the knowledge of what he brought to combat or avail basically in the first five turns. So I'm going to go right out here into Salamence because I know that he can't do anything really. And he actually opts to Spiky Shield. A lot. Let's, let's let me Dragon Dance right in his face. Um, I really had no reason not to. There's not a whole lot this chestnut, chestnut could do to me. And because he let me Dragon Dance, I'm just going to hit the Supersonic Sky Strike and knock this thing out. I really don't want to play games with this chestnut if it has anything like toxic or i'm not really sure so i just i mean i just decided to pull the trigger anyway um here i'm going to go for the fly as he actually opts to thunder wave so that's not bad at all <laughs> i'm glad I, i'm really glad i dodged that i actually fly on this turn as well so if he had double thunder wave that would have been really bad but he actually just chooses to Moonblast, as that's not going to take me out, and allow me to Earthquake, knock out this Clefable, and get to a very, very clean 2.5 in attack, which I believe is times is uh, plus 3. So he's going to go right here into his Poiple, and even if this is Eviolite at plus 3, it is not eating an Earthquake. His defenses are not really that great, so that's going to put me at plus 4. And yeah, this Manectric is not able to outspeed me. I'm going to hit Earthquake on this turn and knock it out. Even after the Intimidate, uh, a plus 3 Earthquake is more than enough to knock out this Mega Manectric. And it's going to put me right back at plus 4 for this Stack Attack. So he might have had a chance here if he was uh, Trick Room, Focus Sash, but, and, and then we didn't have Rocks up. But because we were able to get up Rocks, there's not really a whole lot he could do there. Because we were going to Earthquake and win the game 
5-0. So after this, um, I actually missed out on week five. Me and my opponent could never just find a week to play or find time to play. And then week six went by and my opponent never contacted me. And the league just kind of shut down, unfortunately. Everybody involved were, were great battlers who like to, you know, keep up with their leagues and stuff. But this league just seems to have kind of fallen by the way, wayside, which sucks. I really wanted to do a full-length movie on this league, like I kind of plan on doing for the NPL. But, oh well. I'm glad that I at least have these replays to bring you. A little bit upset that I don't have the replay with Aaron, because even though I lost, I do always enjoy commentating my games against my friends. But... Oh well, yeah, we went 2-2, two and two, which is really, really not bad. Um, I really, really like this Aura Veil team, and if I could somehow manage to sweep something similar with a little bit more offensive power in a future league, then I definitely think that I will. Uh, obviously, Aura Veil is very, very strong, and Salamence in particular behind Veil seems to prosper because uh, unless they have an Ice Shard user on their team, a lot of priority isn't really doing a whole lot to it. It... Um, bullet punches aren't doing a whole lot fighting type uh sorry fighting type priority such as mock punch and vacuum wave is doing pretty much nothing so yeah really really big fan of the team unfortunately we couldn't really play a lot more uh, i'm one of those people who kind of just lost time to play in this league unfortunately i am going to be cutting down on the amount of leagues i'm in in the future but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video i, I really enjoyed this league shout out to aaron for being a great commissioner it's not really your fault the league died um it's just unfortunate circumstance in my opinion. But anyway, if you guys liked and enjoyed the content, please let me know. Go ahead and throw a sub. I'm getting pretty close to 150, which is really cool considering that I started less than a year ago and I've already blown past my only my when I first started YouTube, my only goal was to hit 100 subscribers and we've already surpassed that. So anything on top of that is icing on the cake. Thanks for you guys that have been around since the beginning. A uh, huge shout out and thank you, for the, thank you for those guys that are just getting here and just seeing the content. I really appreciate all of you and hey, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you did. You know how it goes, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.